Hello, this is a short and very introductory tutorial for those that have never uh, typed at a Linux command shell. We're going to use a web-based emulator. So open up your web browser and point it to bellard.org slash JSLinux. It's going to open up the emulator, which will load. And when it's done at the bottom of this black rectangle, we'll have a command prompt at which we can type commands. Our first command will be to print some text to the screen, and we're going to do that with the Linux command echo. That's going to take everything that's on the line after the word echo and print it to the terminal. Everything that we do within a Linux environment happens within a directory structure, and we can identify our location within that directory structure by printing the current working directory with the command pwd. So this tells us that our current working directory is slash fair slash root. We can also look to see what files are in this directory with the command ls to list. This tells us that we have two files here, dos and hello.c. We can create new directories with the command mkdir. So I'll create a directory called data. And now when I list the contents of this directory, we can see that in addition to DOS and hello.c, we now have something called data. And if I want to create to get a little bit more information about this, I can do ls space dash l, the dash being the minus sign. This will give us a long listing. So this dash l is an argument to the program ls. This is going to show on the right our three files or directories, some information about when they were created or accessed, some information about who created them, uh, and then some information on the permissions. So for this data directory, the leading D identifies it as a directory. We can change into this new directory that we've created with the change directory or cd command. So we cd to that directory data. If I print the working directory, we can see that it's now slash var slash root slash data. And if I list the files in this directory, there's none. It's empty. If I want to create another directory, I can create that directory called subdir, and ls shows that directory. I can change directory to subdir, and if I print my working directory, it's now slash var slash root slash data slash subdir. If I want to move upward in the directory structure. There's a number of ways I can do that. One is by typing an absolute path. So I change directory into slash fair slash root. If I print the working directory, I can see my location. If I wanted to move back to slash fair slash root slash data slash subdir, I could type that whole absolute path. But I could also use cd space and then the minus sign. And that's going to take me back to the directory in which I was most recently located. When we want to move up in the directory structure, we don't have to use an absolute path. We can use a relative path. And in this case, dot dot indicates moving one level up. So when I type cd space dot dot and print the working directory, I've moved from var root data subdir into var root data. And I can move back with cd space dash uh, to that subdirectory. If I want to move up two subdirectories, I can change my directory with cd. There's two dots for one level, slash, two dots. If I print the working directory, you can see that I've moved from var root data subdir into var root. And I can then move back again with cd space dash. So two dots indicates moving up one directory. A single dot represents the current working directory. So if I cd to single dot, you can see that that didn't change my location because what I did was change directory to the directory that I'm currently in. So previously, we echoed some text to the screen, which we'll repeat here. But if we don't want that text to come to the screen and instead we want it to be redirected into a file, we can do that with the right angular bracket. We type our command, and then instead of pressing return, we have a right angle bracket and a file 
uh, I'll call it output. When we do that, you'll notice that we did not get hello world printed to the screen. But if we list the files in this directory, we've now got a file called output. But if we want to see the contents of that file, we can use the command cat. So we type cat output. We can see that that file contains the text hello world. If I now echo the number one to the same file, again we get nothing printed to the screen. And if I look inside that file, we have the number one. You'll notice that the text hello world is gone. The right angle bracket uh, leads to the file being overwritten and the previous contents of that file are gone forever. If instead we wanted to append to the file, we can use two angle brackets. And if we look inside that file, we can see that we now have the number one and the number two from our two successive echo commands, the second one being a append event. So I can continue this, adding another one. And if I want to repeat something over and over again, we can make use of the up and the down arrows. So if I press the up arrow once, it gives me the most recent command again two commands ago, and I can scroll through my previous commands. So here I'll use this to rapidly create a growing file output. I continue to append numbers to this file. Another thing that can be useful when we're doing some type of typing to speed things up a bit is to use something called tab completion. So if I echo the number 12 and I want to append, I'm just going to type the letters out, which is the beginning of the file name output, and then I'm going to press the tab key. And the shell has predicted what I want to do. It knows that I'm redirecting to a file. It knows there's a file called output, and that's the only file that begins with the letters OUT, so tab completion filled in that file name for me. And this can also be used with commands. So if I look at this file now, you can see that it contains the numbers from 1 to 12. Sometimes we'll be looking at files with hundreds of lines, and we only want to look at a small section without them scrolling off the screen. So we can look at the first 10 lines in the file with the command head. So head output doesn't print 1 to 12, it prints 1 to 10. Likewise, we can use the tail command to look at the last 10 lines in the file. For files that are large and we want to move through them, we can use a command called more, which in this case prints the whole output of the file, but it would allow us to page through the file screen by screen if we had an extensive file. So I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to echo that string, and I'm going to put it in a file called run.sh, where the .h extension is just a convention for indicating that this is going to be an executable script file. I look at that file, it contains the text hello world. I can also use quotes. around my text. And if I look at that run file, it doesn't have the quotes. The quotes surrounded a string, which Echo took as an argument and output, and we redirected that output to the file run.sh. And these quotes can be useful if we want to uh, treat special characters as part of a string and not have them be interpreted by the shell. So I'm going to echo, and the string that I'm going to echo is going to be echo hello world, redirect it to a file called output.new, which we have not yet created. And then I'm going to actually redirect this to run.sh. And now when I look inside run.sh using the cat command, I see that it contains the command echo hello world, and for that output to be redirected to a file called output.new. So I've created my first script, and I'm ready to run it. If I type run.sh, I get an error. That error is that this file wasn't found. I told you that the period stands for the current working directory, so I can tell the shell to execute within the current working directory dot slash 
run.sh. That leads to an error again. It's a different error. The file was found this time, but I'm being told that I don't have permission to run it. So I have to grant permission to this file to be executed, and I'm going to do that with the chmod command, then the plus sign, which means to add, and the x, which means execute permission. And I'm going to run that chmod command on the file run.sh. If I now dot slash run.sh, I don't get an error. Nothing was printed to the screen. That run.sh contained a command which was supposed to output some text to a file called output.new. So if I list the files, I can see that I now have output.new. And if I look at the contents of output.new, it contains hello world. I can uh, remove this file if I want, of course being very careful because there's uh, there's no undelete in Linux, so I can remove by typing rm output.new and when I list I see that output.new has disappeared. Thank you very much. I suggest at this point that you uh, restart this emulator, uh, turn off this tutorial, and attempt to run some of these commands on your own to create directories, uh, to create files, to cat those files, and maybe even to create and run a simple script. Once you can do that, I suggest that you identify something that you would like to do, such as removing a directory, and run a, a Google search to uh, find the command to do that, and then to try that command in this shell. Thank you very much.